Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Season 10 of this Sussex Rebuild, and this will be the final season of the series. 10 seasons we've had to try and rebuild Sussex, and to be honest, we have done a pretty good job. We are a five-time winner of the county championship, we have won the Blast four times, but we've never actually been able to go on and win the Royal London Cup, which has been the storyline that's plagued us for quite a while. We're coming off one of the worst seasons, if not the worst season in our history. No trophies to a name. Seventh place in the championship. We finished fourth in the group stages of the Royal London Cup. And the Blast, which we're a perennial winner of, we came eighth. Times are hard. And we've got contracts to do one last time with retirement. Oh, I didn't expect that one. Ollie Robinson has finished as a Sussex player, as has Finn Hudson Prentice, who has been absolutely stupendous year on year on year. Uh, we don't actually have a lot of money to play with because we finished so poorly, and this is going to cause us a lot of problems this year trying to work out who's in our team. Alior is a given. Carter is a given considering he's a three-format player. Same as Air. Big fan of that. Tattersall's been class in the Royal London Cup. You can get a game. Uh, London can play in the Royal London Cup. Leonard can play in the Royal London Cup, as can Double A Carter, who had a bit of a breakout year. That is already three hundred and five thousand spent. Joffrey Archer is thirty six grand for a thirty six year old. I don't know about that. I'll come back to it. Astle's been great. Uh, two time top wicket taker for us in the Blast. He's done really, really well. I think I'm going to have to avoid players like Prithi Shaw uh, and Hiradoi. That experiment just didn't quite work now right on medium bowler swanton's going to get a two-year deal he will be available um only 17 years old as well but right on medium i find sometimes in blast and roll london cup games actually does quite well if we look at the championship matt critchley didn't play for us last year we made the move to go to astel george garton again is going to be playing He's going to be playing in 100. This is what this 85% thing is. Joffrey Archer will be part of it. He was played seven games in the Blast. Is that good enough to keep it? He had a really poor year. I think I'm going to move on and leave myself a little bit of money in the back beauty. I'm going to give Bracey a one-year deal. But I think we're going to say goodbye to quite a good number of players who's been great for us. George Garden's been wonderful. Matt Critcher's been wonderful. Archer's been wonderful. But we haven't got the funds to warrant keeping them. So I actually think we're going to say bye to them. Archer played oh, Archer played 11 times in the championship and we might need him for the championship. So I'll give him one year. But Critchley, Garton, Shaw and Hiradoi are all banished. Banished is probably a harsh term for it. Uh, but it does mean we're going to have about 90000 to spend. And the first place we're going to look at is youth players to see if there's something excellent coming through, like P. Kroll, who's 29000 He's got no experience, though. Is it a red herring? Oh, what is that? Jay Sprake. Average is 51. That's pretty useful. Average is 60 in one day. Oh, that's a player and a half. Uh, let's have a look at Kroll, because I was on current year. 128 wickets at 25. I don't feel like we need a batter. If we're going to win anything this year, it's going to be down to bowling. So let's just have a look at first class current season and see if there's anything. Except D Ballard. What's that 81 wickets doing, Sunshine? That's pretty useful. Average 37 in the Royal London Cup, so uh, maybe not. We're going to go back to what you know. We are going 100%. Shine Shara Freedy is available. That is going to be the one and only signing that we are going to make. It's an overseas player. He was great for us before. Oh, we've got 18,500. Could we bring in another player? We're not going to be able to bring in another player. Uh, we're going to add 10 grand onto the physio, and the transfer window is closed. One player is in. Shine Shara Freedy. We're going all in. I'm trying to close it out on the final episode. As we enter the 2032 season. Uh, Bunt has been a great player, but he's never available. That's that's always tricky for us. And it's quite a different sort of team that we're feeling this year. 
Albert and Alior is going to open the batting. Ellery is currently out injured. He averaged uh, only 31 last year, which was a big downturn from his 66 in the previous season. Uh, Cardo 3, Bradley 4, Pollock 5, the ball. We're going all in on the ball for the final season. Astle is just going to keep his uh, reign as the starting spinner. We've obviously let go of Critchley, but he's just going to go in front of Jack Carlson for now. Shine Chara Freedy with the new ball with Thompson, who is a new name for us in the season. We signed him last year, 28,000 he cost us, uh, and we didn't utilise him. It tells us he might be a good player. So we are going to see how he goes trying to be a good player. Uh, Double A Carter and Sam Cook is both in the team. We've got a little bit of depth. Hodgson, who's done well for us in the Royal London Cup, as a young player that came through. He's averaging 51 in county cricket. Leonard's averaging 43 last year. Uh, Archer and Denver were both incredibly poor. Uh, we do have batting on the bench. We've got Nesdale on the bench, who only played four games last year, but averaged 44 the year before. Glenn, Eyre, Tom Haynes. Hey, remember Tom Haynes when he was like the golden child of the team? Well, we've, we've got a big job to do here. We are a five-star rated team. Going up against Nottinghamshire, won the title two years ago. They've got a cracking batting lineup. Can we go and win the treble? And we start as strong as we can. An innings and 62 run victory. Centuries all around, actually. Ali All, 117. First game of the season. That's a, a useful uh, 14,444 first class runs. 47 centuries. What a player. 248 for Scotty Carter. Came through. Uh, sorry, we bought him as a free agent in year number one. Only got eight first-class centuries to his name because he's not been able to cement a place in the team, but runs all round. Uh, Bradders, he goes and scores 93, 43 for Pickens, 91 for the ball. Three fifties from three games for him. And the bowlers get it done. Sammy Cook with six for. That's pretty useful. And Shine Charafridi with four for. With, with second. We've done it again. An innings and 160 run victory here. Uh, Bunter, uh, Bunter, sorry, Bradders, 27 years old now. He started the season in fine. Fettel, 58, career first class average. He scores 189. Carter goes back to back, 248, followed by a 161 from this one, a little bit slower, 331 balls, but equally uh, just as exceptional. And Thompson, second game of his career, goes and bags five for 66. That is a fine performance from the young man. As we go and bowl them out, 118 in about two sessions as we're running out of time because we lost four hours. Uh, still find yourself second, one point behind Essex. And we're done with Leicestershire as well. This one even bigger by an innings and 2-3-1 inside three days. We go big, 605 for six. Our top order is electric right now. Albert comes to the party. He scores 220 off 411. That's an incredible knock for him. Not his highest score of all time, but a career average of 53. Another century for Inform Ali Orr. Second one of the season. He started absolutely red hot. 50 for Carter. 50 for Bradders. 50 for Pickens. We're looking really good. Shane Chorafridi rips them apart in the first innings, and everyone just kind of mops them away with two each in the second. With three for three, it's been about three seasons since we've had a good start to the championship. And right now... We are having a good start to the championship. And we do have a first change of the team. Bradders is away on international duty, which means Nesdale's going to come in and bat in the middle of the order. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to witness history. Rory the Bull, 450s from six matches, averaging 70, is on the verge of going to his first first class century. Hammers it into the leg side. I think it's gone for six. What a way to bring up your first century. What a player the bull is. He's got a ton and then smashes the next ball for four. We've gone an innings again, this time against a very good Surrey team. Dom Sibley scores runs against us every single time. Add Ollie Pope, add Rule, who's been one of the top run scorers in the championship the last few years. George Garton's made his way over there. George Garton one of a Sussex legend, let's be honest. He's got about 10 titles, top wicket taker in the championship three or four times. He gets two for 140 as we go big again. The ball with a ton, Nesdale with a ton coming in, Albert with a back-to-back -back ton. We're four for four. We are thrashing it. Oh, we almost make it, I think, five in a row. Uh, 
Closer game. Leicestershire is a five-star ready team. They're very good across every single format at the moment. And they performed decently here. Their bowling tech was very good. Uh, Pickens and Elbert with the centre in the first innings. Uh, Pickens, I always call him Pickens, it's Pollock. 62 in the second innings for him. We set them about 270 win in two sessions and we, we took nine wickets. Fine performance from the team again. Uh, some good points, but actually second in the table. It's going to come to the crunch when we play against Essex. Jack Carlson, still in the England team. He's just always there, isn't he? Carlson, we never play him, but he's got six test matches to his name. Ten wickets at an average of 53. And we beat Middlesex. Quite convincingly, it's by nine wickets, but we almost ran out of time. Carter goes and scores 100. Albert's in incredible form at the moment. 220, 125, 104, 97. And then finishes with 113 not out. Sam Cook's having a bit of a... Oh, just a roll back to old time sort of season, isn't he? 31 wickets at 15. That's more the Sam Cup we know. 55 at 29 last year, 46 at 26 the year before. Um, just had been petering off. But six games down, it's an interesting title race. 10 points between us and Essex as we go into the blast season. And to be honest, I actually think I'm going to keep a very similar team. Last year, we had Bradders and Bunter around the team, so they got a bit of game time. Glenn's got a really good 153 strike rate, but I do feel like Carter could be a guy that we can put some trust into. So we're going to give, we're going to see how we go. It makes us almost a five-star rated team. You think last year we weren't very good, but debut for Thompson for us in this competition, a 3D Carter and cut with the ball. Well, that worked out quite nicely. 136 all out. Double A Carter. Four for 34. Taking a bit of that. The Sked and the Smead at the top of the order are generally pretty good players. Um, and Albert, 98 not out. Continuing his fine form. Middle order, not quite so good, but it's a win. Match reduced. We need 126 from 12 overs. Six wickets to spare. An over to spare. Ellery with a really nice 60 off 32 to take us home. It was swinging around early doors. Thompson got a couple. Freedy got a couple. So it's a really good start to the season, this. Going up against a five-star Essex team. Woohoo! Uh, we lose to Essex by 31 runs. Uh, we weren't really close, but the ball's 49 off 21 in a partnership with Astle. And then with a 3D, kind of took us close, but we got blown away by little. A discounted supermarket. An injury hits. Double A Carter is out of action. Does mean we've got some options. This is the results from last year. Joffrey Archer went at 12s. Hodgson went to eights. I think I'd go for a Joffre Archer just because of the experience. Man, we got smashed. We lose by three wickets, but we just got blown away at the top of the order. This middle order isn't quite working out as we're two for two. Definitely not working out. Double A Carter's averaging six with a hundred strike rate. So I think we need to change that. I'm going to go back to what you know. Tom Haynes is going to come into the lineup. The ball's got a 200 strike rate. Let's just take a minute to appreciate that. We get home chasing two, uh, sorry, one nine two. Average bowling. Sam Cook's been Sam Cook's been a revelation this year. He's rolled back the years. Age thirty four. Uh, Conor eight point. Generally very very good. With the bat, Ali all went big early doors. Forty three off seventeen. Blitzing it around. That was the goal. Albert and Orr on full aggression. Ellery with fifty four. Haynes comes in and scores a real nice thirty three off twenty. He must be like, oh, I can play cricket. I remember what this game's like. And for the first time in a long time, we've got the superstars back. Bunter comes into the team and Bradders is available as well. He's got such a good strike rate. I think he's going to have to come in for Pollock. So it gives us Bradders and Bunter in the middle. Uh, if we look at T20 internationals, they've got a whole experience. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six international T20 players. Um, we're a good team. We're almost five stars going up against Essex again. Well, that went well. <laughs> We've just been pulled out for 119 with those changes. We lose to Essex. They knock off 200. Ellery had a great knock here. 78 off 35. Not heaps of support going on, but with the ball, oh, Forrest just batted through. and We just couldn't break him down. Some things aren't quite working out either. Astle's got a 10 economy rate. Shine Chorafridi, a 10 economy rate. I know he's bowling in the power play and at the death, but those numbers just aren't great. That's a thrashing. It's a 70-run thrashing, 
based on the bat. It was overcast. It was difficult to bat in. But Albert went big. 10 4s, 360s, 63 at 331 strike rate. Set us up. Bunter comes in and finally adds some runs into his esteemed name in the game. Good performance uh, with the ball. He's trying to shot a 3D going at 15s again. Might need to rethink how I'm actually using him. The ball's dropping out the championship team because we've got Bradley and Bunter back, two of the best players. Double A card is out. He's been very good for us so far. Does create a question of who the hell can we bring in? It's probably going to have to be Joffrey Archer, so I'm glad I gave him a one year deal. Oh, what a win! What a win against Durham in the County Championship. This was neck and neck. We took a first innings lead of about 80. Uh, no one went big, but top six all got a few. They batted really well, scored 388. We're not being as hamstrung as we are by the tail this year. Bowlers are definitely performing better. And we needed 317, basically from 90 overs. We had to bat. Uh, no one got 50. Except Carter, who played the the innings of his life, really. 162 in a winning effort, and we won with three balls to spare. We are six wins, no losses, one draw, and top of the table. As we get back to blast action, we get back to winning. Fraser Middleton with a 50 for them. Joffrey Archer, three for 24. Sean Charafridi went to eight, but he went for 15 in the first over, so I changed it around. We score 189. Ellery with 55. His form this year is okay, averaging 40 with a 158 strike rate. I'm going to take that. We are in danger of just being a 500 team. So win as many as you lose in the blast. Back to being a 500 team, 147 all that. They knock them off pretty easy. We're 5-5 five and five, and our net run rate's terrible behind Middlesex. We've got to get a string of wins. And it works. It was a cloudy day, but we bowled them out for 136. A free D with probably the season best. Four for 15 for him. Double A Carter comes back in with another four wickets. Smashed by Glamorgan with six overs to go. We're still a 500 team. We're just above them. How are we just above them? The How are we just above them? <laughs> oh, and that run rate slightly better. Middlesex have dropped off. The ball's back in for the championship. Averaging 39 this year. Go on the ball. And Double A Carter's back in for Joffre Archer. It's going to be a tight run this championship. Us in Essex. We got smashed by Somerset. We just couldn't get our bat together. 240 all out, 207 all out, 3D with a 5. But they knock them off very easily. And it puts us two points behind Essex. Whoa, showing Shara 3D starting the second innings. Kent chasing down round about 181. Uh, it's not a hat trick, but it's three wickets in three balls. I hear someone running around going, it's a team hat trick. Don't like that. But there's a run out, it's a hat trick. We've got them three down in one over. And we pick up the victory. 180, we score Ellery, we, Ellery with a 50. His campaign is very good, and it keeps getting better and better. Puts us two points clear on an even net run rate going in with one game remaining. As we lose Bunter to international duty as well. His 158 strike rate has been immense. It's going to be Pollock coming back into that middle order. As we beat Gloucester, 214 for 8. Ellery again goes big, 88 off 52. Albert with 50 off 22 as well. It's not a bad season for Albert, this. A 194 strike rate. I've asked a lot of him in how he plays and going so hard early doors. Uh, the reward's been okay. We finished third, maybe Glo oh, no, Gloucester won't pip us, surely. And they don't pip us. So we finish in third, and we've got Durham in the quarterfinals who finished second in their group. Looking at the team, generally it's quite high performing. Some of the bowling economy rates are a lot higher than what I'm used to. I generally look for under eight. Every bowl is over eight. We're showing Shafridi going over eight. But if we look at the strike rate, he's getting a wicket every second over. His strike rate's phenomenal. And I'll take strike rate over economy any day because it sets you up for success. With the bat, in terms of what we've got, Ellery's had a great campaign, 540 runs, average of 40. Strike rates are good. Pollock's a bit of stability in the middle. The ball, I'd love for him to get a 50 here. 223 runs, average of 20. It's okay. That's the worst power play I've seen in the series. We're 27 for 5 after 6. As somehow, we get up to 138. The ball with 50 of 36 deliveries. Solidified, accelerated, showed a bit of class, uh, happy with what he's done, but top order capitulated as we lose by eight 
wickets. That is a really, really poor performance from the team. We are out at the quarterfinals. Oh, we win by 1-12 against Kent. This was a difficult game. We get 4-8-1. Bradders comes back into the team, scores 138. Ali Orwin, 90. Pollock having a really good career, averaging 47. They're all county championship games, pretty much. Uh, averaging 44 this year. Uh, good performance. Elbert with a ton in the second inning as well. He's having an excellent year. Almost a 1,000 runs already. And we bowled them out twice. Didn't think we were going to, but we do. 22 points puts his 11 points clear. We're on for winning the championship. Match drawn against Surrey. It was overcast and difficult in the first day. And we bowled them out for 212. Bowled really well. Showing Chara Frieda with four looking good. We bat big hoping uh, maybe if we just bat once it'll be pretty good. The ball with 94. Pollock with 150. Uh, Bradders, he goes and scores 103 as well. Looking good. Then it's a road. Like day three, day four, it's still almost full on the pitch wear and conditions and bright sun. And then middle order just slows us up enough. So it's match drawn. We get a draw one point behind Essex after 10. I think it's Denver constantly getting updates um, to his bowling technique. Not seeing that translate. Bought him in for two games, averaging 42. Bradders goes on international duty, but we've got Bunter to come in instead. Big game against Lancashire. Defending county championship champions. We've been smashed by Lancashire. Absolutely smashed. They score 395 in under 90 overs. They smashed it. Vasconcelos and Salt at the top. Page going to overrun a ball. We bat and do the same. We score at a massive rate. And then get our middle order ripped apart by Usher Spence. Puts us in a difficult position. We follow on. We've not followed on many times in this series, but we follow on here. Uh, the ball holds us together with 75 alongside Pollock. But it's never enough. It's never enough. And it puts us 21 points behind the title. As we go into dun, 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 Royal London Cup time. We've actually got plenty of bowlers available to us which is a very good thing. We've just not got many batters available to us. That's the problem. Um, wondering whether we give James Bracey another go. You know, He's been pretty decent for us throughout the say, but virtually every single player is unavailable. Uh, Haynes and Carter at the top. Uh, James Bracey is going to keep wicket. Nesdale, eh, th that top four was brilliant last time. Tadasol had a bit of a down year. Bracey's in. And we went with two spinners, I think, last season. I'm absolutely positive we went with two spinners for part of it. Got Duckworth, who always has a really good strike rate. So I'm thinking we might do the same again and try and do two spinners. We've got Freedy, we've got Thompson, we've got Young Hopper. Ash by 90 runs by Worcester. They get 3-2-5. Bowling attack didn't work. Hopper went at sevens. Uh, just lost control of the game. The spinners bowled quite well together, but I bowled them too many overs consecutively. Leonard was really good for us two seasons ago. So I think that's the change we're going to go. We're going to have four seamers in the team. We're a four-star rated team. Yeah, that's a victory. 3-3-7 three, three, for nine. Air with 71 off 64. Duckworth was 63 as well. That's pretty impressive. Bowl them out for 168. Bowling attack a better balance. But the key thing is if you get a good start with your bowlers in economy rate, it puts them behind the game. And that's what we did. And we've smashed them. Somerset go down. Thompson with 5 for 43. It's really interesting our bowling attack. We've got Freddie and Thompson uh, opening bowlers in the championship. So two very good bowlers getting it done. Duckworth with another 65. Where has this batting been? He averages 12 in first-class cricket. 21, okay. His 250s in his career have come in back-to-back -back games. 50 for Tadasol as well. Two and one. Question is, can you make it a run? Can you go three and one and give yourself some distance from being a 500 team? Oh, it's just one of those days. Three, two, one, uh, they get. Piggott and Pear score 100 in the most horrendous of batting conditions. Smash it around as well, particularly Pears. 116 off 78. That's quite unusual. 22-year-old um, is averaging 47 with two centuries now. Um, we just get blitzed. There's nothing we can do about it. We can't stop it. We're going to make a change. Hopper's going to come out and Hodgson's going to come in. Hopper's 116 bowling average. I'd, just, I'd take a couple of extra wickets at the moment. A good win, actually. A good bounce-back win over Northamptonshire. 
We score 315. Haynes and Carter at the top. Carter with another century. 11 Royal London Cup centuries and almost an average of 50 to his name. Northants 241 all out. Thompson. It was good control at the top, let's be honest. Good control at the top. Denver in bowls his bowling technique again, but how bad is his bowling technique that it's not made a difference to him so far? That's a victory as well. Our bowling attack is pretty good at the moment. We only score 256. Tadassol with 91. A couple of 50s on the season for him now. But bowling attack. Thompson 3 for 27. Duckworth 2 for 31. It's looking really good. Two games to go. and we're, whoa, I was going to say, we're, we're looking good. We're looking good net run rate, but there's five teams on eight points. Oh, we win by 10 runs. That's a tidy... 85 for air, 50 for Bracey. Bracey's been pretty good, actually. Two 50s, three meaningful contributions. I'll take that. Um, not the best batting performance, but bowling performance, again, wickets up top do the trick. Freedy with four wickets. He's had a, uh, I would say, an excellent campaign for us so far. Economy rate's high, but he's a strike rate bowler. His strike rate's exceptional. Oh, we've been smashed last game of the season. Durham 315, it's a massive score, and we're 176 all out, but we have made it to the dance. We're into the quarterfinals on our net run rate, Whew. and we're going to do it without Nesdale, which, to be honest, has had a very, very poor campaign. We do have some high-profile players back as well. Brad is, is going to come in. I think with the ball, I feel like we shouldn't change it. When we change it, Things fall apart, and I don't want that to happen. Uh, if we look at career averages, we've got Ellery who can come in, who's an excellent strike rate player. Could bring him in for these guys, but look, Brace has been in fine fettle. No Cook, no London, no double A Carter. Going with Hodgson. These are the boys that's taking us to the dance. Can we go and beat a very good Hampshire team? We're there. We're into the semis. We bowled them, bowled them out for 207 off 48 overs. Four for Thompson, four for Afridi. Control from Hodgson. That was the change I was going to make. Or Leonard, and they both performed beautifully well. 64 for Haynes, 64 for Carter, 73 for Brad is coming into team. The only change that we made, it takes it into the semis against Lancashire. And Leicestershire are there again. They are... A Royal London Cup dynasty at the moment. They've won it three of the last five years. A semi-final thrown into the mixer. They've risen to second place in the championship and runners-up in the T20 competition. They are a fine team. And the semi-final will be without Bradders. It's going to be Ali Orr stepping in at number three. We're a four-star rated team going up against a four and a quarter of Lancashire. Collie is the guy. He's a fantastic player. And Spence with the ball. It's not a bad bowling performance. 2-6-8 all out. Collier and Vasconcelos were going like an absolute rocket. 110 for none they were. We bowled them for out for 2-6-8. Making changes at the right time. Leonard with a 4.3. Economy rate, probably the best bowler. As we lose by 65 runs. So after 10 seasons, the Royal London Cup evades us. And it was Spence again. First over of the contest, he took Haynes and Carter. Changed the game. We couldn't get going. Uh, Freedy with 49 at the end, but it's another semi-final loss for us. A difficult competition to do because we're basically funding the 100 with all of our players. Thompson and Freedy, top two wicket takers in the competition as well. Back to the championship. We've had a good season. Semi-finals of the Royal London Cup. Quarter-finals of the Blast. It's not our level, but we've got three games to win a final championship. We've set ourselves up here against Kent. Three games left of the season. We've just scored 293 on 40 overs, just trying to smash it. But we've left them 294 to win from three and a bit sessions. So they, in theory, could go and win this game. Not on our watch. 174 are out. Shine Shara Freedy takes the first five wickets of the innings, smashes them down. 21 points. It puts us level, and Essex have got a game in hand. And who are we playing next? Essex. This is the proverbial six-pointer in football. They've played their game in hand and they only pick up three points. Somerset beat them and beat them bad. The batting doesn't shine and we've given ourselves a chance. Win this, we could win the title. Shane Sharafridi, just the 70 wickets this season, an average of 19. 
that's pretty impressive. I'd say that's a good sign and a good use of your money. Thompson averaging 32, pretty good season. Cook, back to where he belongs with the bat. Oh, we've got Bunter back. We've got Bradley back. Bradley's the guy that's been in the form, so he's going to play. The ball's going to drop out, and Bunter's coming in. We're five-star against five-star. It's almost like a winner-takes-all final. It's like the Bob Willis Trophy final on steroids. We're batting, and we've done it. We've gone and smashed them 20 points to two. Shine Shara Freedy, man of the match, 10 for in the game, 7 for 64 in the second innings. They offered some resistance in the middle order. And Rantha, who's uh, been a pain in the bum quite often in this series, he made 35 not out, but we got through them. We get the victory, and it puts us 15 points clear with one game left of the save, one game left of the season. We go up against former champions Nottinghamshire. Wow. We've been harassed by rain. Four hours, 48 lost. We basically lost day one. It's four points apiece after the first innings. So that gives us 19 points. And Essex, oh, are behind the game. 3-7-3, Rian Ahmed with 78 not out. Essex, 2-5, one all out. 132 for four. So they're chasing 250 plus. Okay, so we need 273 to win from not many overs. Essex need 245 to win. If they win, they win the title, I think, at the moment. Oh, no. We're, we've absolutely fluffed it. We've got one wicket left. 88 to win in 42 minutes to survive. We've lost the game. We get four points. And we've won the title. Oh, Essex obviously didn't get the victory in that last game. But I kind of made a pig's ear of that. Albert is going to top the batting charts on the year with 1,400 runs at an average of 67. That's a fine effort. Also, Scotty Carter, 1,300 runs at an average of 62. I'm going to take a bit of that every single day of the week. Ali Orr, for the first time in the save, it's taken 10 seasons. But he misses out on the 1,000 run club, averaging 40. But not getting it done with the ball. Shine Shara Freedy surely at the top. No! Ridley, eh? From Durham. 23 years old, picking up 89 wickets at an average of 21. A Freedy, 85 wickets at an average of 18 at a strike rate of 39 is just amazing. So the save comes to an end. If you've enjoyed it, thank you so much for watching. Leave a thumbs up. If you want to share it with anyone, you can do. I'm going to put a super cut version out next. And we're going to start on the next series. The big series is going to be a youth challenge only. So you've got to invest in your youth players, develop them. And they're the only players you're allowed to sign. You're not allowed to go into the free agent market and sign players. It's going to be incredibly difficult, incredibly long, but incredibly rewarding to see players like the ball and players like that coming through uh, and being the best players around. Just a quick look at some of the records. Most runs in the season in County Championship, 734 from Ali Orr. Most wickets of Freed is 85 this year. Uh, fastest 50, 21 balls by Ellery. 65 balls, fastest 100 by Bradders. Ali Orr with the top score. We also got bowled out for 113 one time. That's uh, that's pretty average. Roll London Cup. 388, we didn't top the 400, that's a bit of a shame, 154, the highest score for Carter, 12 balls, picking score to 50 against Warwickshire in 2026, fastest 100 with this year, uh, Nesdale's 56 ball century, that's impressive, and Thompson with his 29 wickets, the most we've had, in terms of the blast, Ali Orr 775, the best, Basley just 37 wickets was very, very good, we did score 273 against Somerset in season number 2, and Ali Orr owns a whole host of records for highest innings, fastest 50, fastest 100. A uh, quick look at partnerships. Did we break any records? Yeah, Albert and Ali Orr put on 400. Tom Haynes and Albert put on 416. And that's it that makes it into that list. This is the historical list. Slater and Steve Smith, 226, is a Roland and Cup record. Pollock and Haynes put on 200, that made it. Haynes and Bracey, that made it. Baz Delida and Bracey, that made it. Janssen and Curry, that made it. We made a lot of those, and I would have thought we made a lot of these as well. Haynes and Alior, 229 run opening partnership. All Sop and all, Haynes and Bradders, uh, very, very good. Critchley put on 100 partnership, and then All Sop, Delida, uh, Delida, Ellery, all getting it done. 
Um, it's a fine performance. I hope you've enjoyed the series. I've really enjoyed making it. I've enjoyed the additional stats to the game. I'm definitely going to do that with the youth only challenge because it kind of gives you a baseline to how good they actually are across it um, and see what records we can make. So thank you so much for watching, everyone. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll catch you soon.